Well guys, back in London again in another travel lodge. This time I'm in Southwark. Uh, I've stayed here before but not since 2018 I think it was the last time I was here and it's had a refurb since. Like, it's a travel lodge, they pretty much all look the same. Uh, I'm very glad to see that they actually have USB ports for charging because I forgot to bring my adapter plug. So my phone's currently by the bed charging because I used it all the way up. Uh, I was a little creeped out when I got into the room, I'm not going to lie, because I don't know if when they came in to make the beds they would put the TV on. When I came in there was snooker on the TV and it just freaked me out. So I had a momentary check where I just had to check I had the right room number, but as far as I know this is my room. There's no like there's nothing else in here, so it better be my room. But yeah, downside to this room is it's the side of the building is on and means I'm actually overlooking the railway tracks. Like I said, I've stayed here before and I've been on this side of the building before, so I don't remember them being that big an issue, but we'll see. Uh, the one upside to this room in particular, maybe not the hotel, but at least the room, is it actually has a vanity mirror, which I'll turn you around to show. So, I know it's just a basic vanity mirror, but no, I almost never get these in travel lodges. And when I'm like trying to do my mirror, I'm usually, I don't think there's one in this room actually, I'm not, I didn't look. Oh, you can see it for there, that like full length mirror, that's the only thing they have in the room. So trying to do my makeup in the mornings and do my hair has always been interesting. So I'm glad I got the vanity so I can actually sit here and do my makeup. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm only up for two nights again. Uh, I originally booked this weekend off in hopes of doing a 10k so for the last three years I've done the Vitality 10k I did it last year in person two years before that were virtual and they took ages to announce the, the date for it so I did some like research and there was a charity that was offering a place for it and it was advertising as the 1st of May which is today Saturday the 29th so in two days time so I booked this week on weekend off for it and then it got announced uh, back in February then that it's actually going to be in September instead. So won't get to do that race this year, which is a little disappointing, but it's always next year. And I do have 10k in February anyway, so I'm not that bothered. But yeah, it meant I had a weekend off and nothing to do with it. So I debated about coming up to, see Lon to London. Uh, only if like something came up, and luckily something did, a one-off concert came up. So I'm up here again. If not, I would have just uh, chilled out at home and actually gone to done some stuff in Cardiff. But that's fine. Like I said, uh, last year, end of May, I went to West Enders Hollywood. And tomorrow night, it's West Enders Hollywood, the sequel. So I booked to come see that. I had a good time last year, so it made sense to come up again this year. But yeah, uh, tonight I'm going to see Oklahoma. Uh, to be honest, I'm not like dying to see the show, but I probably mentioned it before, if not, I'm gonna say it again. But my friend bought me a poster with like a hundred, like a scratch off poster with a hundred like musicals on it. So I'm trying to scratch off as many as I can. So back on Tuesday, I took my mum to see King and I in Cardiff. So that's one scratched off and Oklahoma is actually on there as well. So I'm gonna take that off. So right now it's only about 20 to four. So I've got a good while till the show. Uh, on my way over after I got off the bus, I grabbed a cookie, so I'm going to eat that right now because still a little peckish. Uh, I know there's a Tesco around the corner, so I'm going to pop up there before I actually go in and see the show just to get some stuff that I can have for breakfast in the morning. It saves me having to go out in the morning. But yeah, I'm going to do my makeup because I didn't have time to do it this morning because I was kind of rushing around because I was working last night, so I had to get final stuff done this morning. So I'm going to do that and then I'll head out on the show. So I'll um, see you in the next clip when I should be heading out. Well, my plan for breakfast tomorrow hasn't quite gone to plan. I'd hoped to go, well I said hoped to, I'd gone to the Tesco up the street and I'd hoped to get the four pack of chocolate chip muffins but they didn't have any. They only had blueberry and I'm not a big fan of blueberry. So that was a bit of a bust. I've ended up just getting packed chocolate digestives. Ah, you know, very nutritional breakfast tomorrow. Uh, it probably won't last me 
much past tomorrow because by the time I have them for breakfast and then I'm not going to be back too late tomorrow night because the show I'm seeing tomorrow night I think it's only should be finished by about nine-ish probably nine half nine so I'll probably end up snacking on them tomorrow evening as well but that's fine Monday I'll just have to go to the prep around the corner and get breakfast on there which you know it is what it is I enjoy a prep breakfast but I'm trying to save money where I can and breakfast is the easiest way to do it so like I said if I'd got the muffins it would have cost me about 150 ish the four muffins and I've got stuff that I can have in the hotel room drink wise so I could have a breakfast to cheer but that's how it goes uh as for my plans now it's about half past four I was aiming to leave in about an, maybe an hour it gives me plenty of time to get to like Leicester Square grab a quick bite to eat and then go to the show but beans it is such a lovely day up there I'm actually gonna head out now I can grab food then and just sit in Trafalgar Square or somewhere out in the open and just make the most of the weather. Uh, I will try and be better this trip uh, in regards to filming and trying to film more than I normally do. I've noticed, obviously because I edit these videos, I don't put a lot of b-roll in or me talking out and about. Part of that is just been weather lately, so I'm being ill, so fingers crossed I'm not ill this trip. But yeah, I've got no reason to not really get my camera out this time, so hopefully there'll be more clips for you. Um, yeah, and I should have more chance to talk to you as well. Normally when I find somewhere quiet to sit, I get my book out and just read. But I finished my book on the bus just before we got into Victoria, so I haven't actually got anything to read. Well, I say I haven't got anything to read. I have got another book that I can start, but I'm going to wait, wait till tomorrow and start it tomorrow. So yeah, I'm just going to finish rounding up the last of my stuff, which is basically my phone's on charge, so I just need to grab that. And then we'll head out. in the hotel as you can see uh sorry i didn't talk to you guys while i was out i think i got a little bit of b-roll but nothing major main reason for that is saturdays in london especially like central london are heaving i don't know how many like sirens i heard just trying to get food was difficult because it was rammed so yeah it was hard enough just trying to navigate without getting the camera out so yeah, apologies for that. Oh, well, I say apologies, it's, I couldn't do anything about it and I wouldn't have felt comfortable getting the camera out. Uh, another reason, kind of, was I thought I'd actually forgotten my camera. I got to the station and was about to get on the... Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's a red light flashing and it's distracting me a little bit, but yeah. I got to the station and went to film like the clips you would have seen the little travel roll and couldn't 
think where my camera was because it wasn't in my media pocket. So I just filmed on my ca on my phone. Uh, only to get to the theatre, go to put my hand in a different pocket, and suddenly find my camera. So, but yeah, the rest of the night now it's well, nearly eleven o'clock, so not too late. I'm not gonna really do much the rest of the night. I'm gonna watch a bit of TV. Gonna go take my makeup off, brush my teeth, wash my face, and then chill out, and then go to bed. I've got no real plans for the morning. That could change. But as it stands, I've got nothing majorly planned. Like I said, I'm out, I'll have breakfast here of some form. And then I might go wandering, we'll see. But nothing opens till midday really. So I'll probably spend the morning here. But who knows, that might change when I wake up. I might just get bored and decide to go wandering. But yeah, I'm gonna go and get ready for bed. And I'll catch up in the morning. Morning. <laughs> so I don't know what it is about London. But I always wake up ridiculously early, which is weird because I go to bed later than I do normally. So the fact I wake up early just makes no sense, but here we are. It's currently quarter to seven, I think, around then. I've been awake for a little bit, maybe about a half hour, but not actually got out of bed. Uh, I know it's everything thing because I've got my camera, so I've obviously got out of bed, but this is actually in the bottom corner of the bed, so I don't kick it in the night. So I haven't actually had to get up. But yeah, like I said last night, I didn't really have any plans for this morning. I still don't, but because I've got up so early, there's no way I'm sticking in the hotel for the next four hours. So yeah, sorry a bit croaky. Like I said, I'm, it's the third time I've talk, talked this morning, so my voice is uh, still waking up. But yeah, I'm going to go wandering. I'm, well, I'm going to have a shower first, I get ready for the day and then head out. I'm going to have breakfast here. I say tentatively. I'm going to have the biscuits, like I said yesterday. My plans have slightly changed in regards to breakfast. I thought I bought little like packets of hot chocolate with me, but realised that I actually left them in the house again. So, no hot drink for me this morning. But I heard about this pastry place in Leicester Square. It's meant to be really, really good, like the donuts there. I did go check it out last night because obviously the theatre was near there. But there was a bit of a queue. So I'm going to try and go this morning because it might actually be quieter. I'm also planning to uh, go up to Regent's Park, maybe wander around Regent's Park. One, because I've never actually been to Regent's Park. In all my visits to London, I've never actually got off at Regent's Park. And two, I'm seeing a show there next month in the open air theatre. So I just kind of want to suss out like where everything is, like the entrance and all that. So yeah, that's going to be my plans for the morning. And then, like I said, around midday, everything starts to open up. So I'll probably go look around the shops a bit. I don't want to leave it too late because I want to go back to the hotel and get changed for tonight. But yeah, we'll see what the day has in store so I'm gonna go have a shower and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Well I'm now showered and dressed and ready to go out well I say ready I've still got my shoes on but that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah I've been trying to figure out the best way to do what I got planned today and trying to fit everything in. The thing that's thrown me off is mainly that going to that pastry place to get that donut because otherwise my travel is pretty simple, so it's Jubilee line up to reach, um, not Regent's Park, Baker Street, and then do Regent's Park from there, and then back to Baker Street, Big Lou down, down to Oxford Circus, and then Oxford Circus to Piccadilly, and then back, then walk to Green Park and get back on the Jubilee line back to the hotel. But that place I'm going to go to is in Leicester Square, so it's kind of a little out of the way, and I don't want to leave it too late because it keeps myself warm and again. So I've altered the route and as I was altering it and looking at like the two maps trying to work out the best way to get around I remembered that I've never actually been to King's Cross, I've been to St Pancras but never King's Cross and in King's Cross there's a Harry Potter store. Now I'm not a huge huge Harry Potter fan but I do like it. So I'm going to go there and maybe see if I can find something for my niece and nephew 
and then I'll go on to Regent's Park from there. Um, no, obviously Regent's Park, but I'll go on to a tube station near Regent's Park and then walk. So yeah, I'm going to go up. I don't know why I'm explaining all this. You're coming with me, but yeah, go get my donut up to King's Cross, then Regent's Park, and then I'll come back down that way then. So yeah, I'm just going to finish grabbing my stuff. The pastry shop opens in about 10 minutes, I think, so it should take me about 15 minutes to get there, so that's perfect. So yeah, let's head out. So, just left Leicester Square now. I haven't got a donut. Uh, I'm going to loop back and get it later on, only because they were still doing the donuts, so there's only two out at the time and they were the ones I wanted so I know exactly which donut I want so I've got to wait for the last step so what I'm going to do is switch things around I'm going to head to okay sorry I'm just looking right away I'm going to head to Piccadilly uh, head up to Richie's Park well, no head up to Baker Street and then move to for a while and then uh, do kind of the reverse so we just park King's Cross then come back to us this way and then walk Piccadilly and then so it's a complicated route but they'll allow me to do everything I want to again plus it'll probably work out a little better because it means oh wait this is tractable part so it's a bit of a convoluted route but it works out better for me because I'm probably not gonna have food tonight so if I can have the donut around midday and then eke out and have maybe a subway a little like mid-afternoon that should sustain me for this evening so yeah I'm just coming back on my square now I know I said at FS Square but I left the station like where the donut shop is so yeah I'm gonna go hop on the tube and head up to Regent's Park and then just have a wander around sit on a bench and read take in the glorious weather because it's actually I would say it's blue skies but it's quite a nice day again so yeah I'll uh, get my camera out again once I'm uh, at Regent's Park Well, I made it to Regent's Park. Uh, theatre wasn't as hard to find as I thought it was. For some reason I find it thought, can't get my words out, it'd be more difficult. But yeah, I'm gonna chill out here for a bit. It's only like 25 past nine, so I've still got a while left until I gotta be anyway. So I'm just gonna find a nice quiet spot, take in some sun and read my book. So yeah, like there are plenty of benches, like look, I, there's plenty of like, empty spaces, it's nice early Sunday morning, there are people around but yeah, plenty of places for me to sit. I, can see, I don't quite know whether I'm going to stay in this part of Central, uh, Central Park, definitely the wrong city, if I'm going to stay in this part of the park but yeah, I'm really like I've come here now and I've seen like loads of runners and I was like really wish they could run around here like I didn't bring my kit with me because to be honest it was going to take me a while to get here so I didn't bother it was going to take me about 20 minutes from my hotel and I don't really want to do 20 minutes after sat in sweaty clothes so yeah like I said I'm going to go for a nice sunny spot with a nice quiet bench and sit and read so I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Uh, I've been sat in Best Square for the last like, 30 minutes or so 
I went to Donatella's, which is the pastry shop. The Adonis and Kimbo. Oh my god. That is hands down the best thing I've ever eaten. Like, snack wise. Uh, like, I'd never heard of it. I'd seen somebody else talk about it. Alright, I'll go have a look. I had a look yesterday at the menu and it's like, okay, then you look interesting. And I'm so glad I went. Like, they're on the expensive side because they're like six quid per donut, so they're really expensive, but so worth it. And I definitely could have had more of them. I'm not much of a like cream filled donut person, but yeah, those are worth it. I had the was it, vanilla pecan, so you had like candy pecans and fresh cream, and oh, so good. Like, it's not something I'll go to every time I'm here, but definitely something I will try and get out now and again. So, right now I'm heading from Leicester Square, I'm currently in Piccadilly, over to the Waterstones, and I'm going to do a bit of book shopping. Well, I'm going to do book browsing, not necessarily shopping, because although my book buying fan is kind of over, like I can buy three books, I'm just going to browse today, she says, but I'm we'll probably going to buy books, but yeah. So, I'm gonna. Sorry, I'm rushing, but I'm trying to vlog, watch the crowd, and not get run over. But yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down because my arm's getting tired, and I'll uh, speak to you guys in a bit. So, I did a thing. I'm not going to talk about it, we don't need to talk about it, but yeah, I'm now back on a book buying van, just got off and now I'm back on it, uh, I was good though, I was only allowed three books and I only bought three books, so that's pretty good for me, especially London, Piccadilly store, loads of books I actually wanted to buy, but I behave myself, I'm also not just a book buying van, but it's books I do buy have to fit a certain criteria which is no new authors. So any books I saw that were by new authors that I wanted, I just took pictures of them and I'll end up getting them on Kindle. The reason for that is, um, I've said it before, I'm running out of book space. I've got room for like 50 more books but I don't want to fill that space up too quickly, so I'm sticking to just uh, pre-read authors. So it means it lasts a little longer, and it means I can keep reading the authors I want to read. But yeah, I'm finishing Piccadilly. I'm now walking up to Oxford Circus because nice day. Well, a little bit cloudy now, but still a nice day, and I've still got loads of time to kill. So, yeah, Oxford Street, just going to go look in the Disney store, maybe in Clay's because I want to get uh, some earrings because I bought some earlier this month when I went to get another set of piercings, once again, we don't talk about that one either, uh, and I bought new jewellery to go with my pre-existing ones, and they're a different size and different colour for the others, so I'm just going to go Clay's and try and find something similar, so at least it doesn't look too odd. But yeah, I'm going to put my arm down, because one, crowded, two, loads of roads across, and three, I'm getting cramped in my upper arm, so yeah. I'll see you guys, uh, probably when I grab some food, so if not, I'll see you once I get back to the hotel. So, <coughs> so I'm trying a new angle, there's a little like shelf above the desk that's like the side of the desk so I'm putting you on that because the lighting's not that bad it doesn't make a difference which way I face uh, I had a little issue getting into my room so I got up to my floor and my key wouldn't open the door to the floor I had two room keys issued to me yesterday uh, just because it automatically issued me two so I got the other one out which was in my bag. That one opened the door either. So I ended up having to go all the way down to reception and get them to reset. I've had this happen previously. I don't know what caused it. Before they've said always oh, if you put it next to something mag like another card, it might magnetise it. 
one of one of them was in my jacket pocket so it didn't, wouldn't need anything so i don't quite know what happened there but i think my friend jade stayed when she stayed here a couple of months back she had the same problem and hers was in the middle of the night thankfully mine was a lot earlier but yeah i've like i said i'm back in the hotel now i've just finished eating my food just went for another subway uh it's probably not going to sustain me for tonight because I planned to try and get like two hours later than I actually did but I was done shopping and I just wanted to come back to the hotel so yeah I've eaten now so that's good I, I was hungry so I need something but yeah I'm gonna get hungry later on luckily I've still got like a snack part from the meal deal and I bought up like a sharing pack of crisps anyway which I was for the bus more than anything but if I get hungry I'll eat them plus I've still got my toxic digestives so between the three of them i will be all right to just snacking throughout the afternoon um yeah i haven't really got much planned now until i leave later on i'm undecided about whether to have another shower or not i'm not majorly sweaty but i don't know my hair feels like greasy it's not i just put a bit too much product in it this morning so i don't know I'll probably have another shower tonight opposed to before the show just because by the time I've done the underground again I'm probably sweaty again plus it'll help to get my makeup off later on so if anything I might wash my face and just redo my makeup and then get dressed I did go in Claire's and they've got like a buy three get three free I don't know deal on so I bought a bunch of jewellery uh, I'll show you them later on kind of so like I explained I've got, what was it, nine helix, like, cartilage piercings. Not clear what we're doing the lobe ones, but nine cartilage piercings. So I've been gradually buying, like, them in threes. And the final set was just, instead of being silver, it was real gold. And they were actually quite a lot bigger. I haven't got the pot, I think it's in my suitcase, to show you the difference. Hang on, I'll get the euros and I'll show you the difference. So, as you can see, this is the rose gold one, which I have three of, which I bought in the last purchase. And these are the silver ones that I've had for a couple of months. And, you know, they're a lot different in size. So, yeah, having them different sizes makes it a bit harder to wear them. If they'd been just different colour but same size, I could have just alternated it, so it would have been a lot alright. But, because they're different sizes, it's just going to look weird. So, I brought them up just in case. But I did manage to get some in clears. They don't look the same because these are not from Claire's and they are bigger so what I'm going to do because I have six of the smaller ones I'm going to put four in that side and then I bought six new ones from Claire's so I'm going to put those in that side so they'll look different on either side but at least the, the sides will be matching and I did mention that I've got new piercings so I don't think I showed you the helix ones I had hang on let me take my glasses off so these purple ones I had done years ago and then this top one and those two I had done in the summer and then that third one then there in my lobe I use my new ones, I've got them on both sides see, there too and yeah, I just got bored uh, literally a few days after I got back from the last trip and just went into <laughs> Cardiff and got them done I say I got bored, it wasn't necessarily a whim because I'd gone a couple of weeks earlier and there was just, I didn't have time, the point, they had walking appointments but it was going to be like a two hour wait and I had something, somewhere to be um, not long after that so it wouldn't have been ideal. So yeah, it was a bit of a experience. So that was my sixth piercing I think I've had done in that place and I actually blacked out. I followed the guidance like you meant to make sure you drink and eat beforehand and they recommend that you've eaten in the last hour. So I'd had food, but I think I should have eaten a lot more, and it also didn't help. I do have seen from my last video, I was ill towards the end of the trip, and I was still getting over that, so I don't think having that on top of not eating quite enough, I think that's what caused me to black out. And like the guy who was doing the piece and said, you know, as ha he asked me if it happened before, it hadn't. And like, you, you, you could tell the first thing he said before it even happened, he said, you know, I'm no pro with this, because I've got quite a few piercings already so yeah it was weird and um, it might actually stop me from going to get any more not from there just in general 
mainly because I'm running out of room. But <coughs> sorry about that little tangent about piercings, but yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna chill out here for like the next couple of hours. It's what, five past two now? Show's not till half six, and I can't pick my tickets up until five because I need, I've need i had my tickets to the box office for once. So, you know, I've got nothing to do until about four o'clock, probably around four-ish I'll start getting ready. So for the next two hours, I'm just gonna chill out here and read my book and snack and hydrate and let my phone charge because it's only on like 25%. So yeah, I'll see you guys once I'm changed and ready to leave. So here we are later on and I'm now changed as you can tell. So this is what I went for. Simple white trainers, nice long starry dress, wrap around kind of style and then my new denim jacket which I bought specifically to go with this dress but it will go with others. And then uh, my makeup. I uh, don't know how I feel about the lip. It might be a bit too bold for my liking, but we'll see how it goes. It's uh, trying something new. <laughs> it's taking me out of my. It's going to make me a little paranoid, put me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but I need to do that every now and again. So, gone with a bit slightly bolder lip. Uh, I've also rewashed my hair because it was just bugging me. I, um, yeah, I didn't like properly wash it, I just put water over it, trying to rinse out the excess product, and yeah. Better than it was, so I'll take it. Um, so after the last clip, I also changed my earrings out. So I ended up going with the rose gold ones on the top there, and then the silver ones, the small ones there, and then my new ones I bought in my lobes. And then switch over to show the other side because I've got a cool earring on the other side. So same there, new ones in the lobe, small silver ones there, and then the top one, don't know how well you can see that, is a bat little helix piercing, a little like stud uh, with a bat on, which I think arrived about a week ago. I ended up with two of them, so this one's a silver one and I came with a free blue one. I don't know why, but I ended up with a free one. So I'm not gonna say no to that. And I actually quite like the blue one because it's blue, but like silver accents on it. So yeah, I'm waffling now, so let's head out. Evening, so just got back now. Uh, show was really good. Like, they made a joke at the start, like, they were gonna prove like sequels are better than the originals or it's just as good. And yeah, everybody who was on stage, even like the GSA um, students and those that go to like a musical theatre group, who were like, I don't know how old, they, how old those girls were, but I think they were about 15 maybe. Their voices are all insane and it is just sickening that they were all in one room at the same time. But yeah, I actually paid for VIP tickets, well, ticket, and didn't actually know what that entailed because it didn't say anything on the website. But it actually meant that everybody in that section got a free tote bag and a programme that was signed for the entire cast. So. They came out to hand them out because they were meant to be on the seats already but they hadn't got around to it. And it was kind of funny because one of the people handing them out was Matt Lucas so that was weird. To see him not on stage but actually like doing ushering kind of stuff which was quite funny. But yeah, the person that was meant to be sat next to me, they'd obviously paid for a ticket but just didn't show up. So I actually took two programmes. They, What happened was they give them all out and they had more programs than they had tote bags so they were going to get the tote bags during the interval to that person they showed up because they didn't show up, they didn't get a tote bag and I just took the, the extra program so I've messaged my friend Jade now and see if she wants it because I'm probably going to see her next month uh, when Carrie's on tour, I think we, we've both seen London so I'll um, message her now and if she does want it I'll give it to her when I meet up with her next uh, I did, the only downside, like I said, I didn't know that we'd be getting those programmes, so I actually paid for my own programme, so I had a blank one. I ended up going to stage door, just, it was nice to talk to, to the um, performers, so I wanted to meet Joel and Carrie, which were the two I mainly wanted, and got them to sign the programme, so it means I now technically have three signed programmes. Like I said, one's going to go to my friend Jade, I, and the other two I'll probably keep for myself, one just because it's signed by the entire cast, and the other one because it's only signed by like five members of the company but 
at least I know whose signature is who and it meant I got a nice chat with Joel and Carrie. So yeah, I'm going to call it a night now. I'm not necessarily going to go to sleep, but obviously I need to get my makeup off. I want to try and get all my urines out and put my other ones back in, just because it's easier to sleep with. And I'd have to take them out tomorrow anyway, because I have my niece and nephew on Tuesday. And my niece will go mad if she sees hoop urines, she will pull them. And I don't want that. So yeah, I'm just going to chill out and hopefully I'll see you guys in the morning. So I know I said I was going to end the night there, but... Just wanted to add this little clip in. I managed to get all my pe my urines out. I'm just in the process of putting the other ones back in. When I dropped the bearing off one of them, luckily I managed to find it. I got the torch and it managed to spot it just. But let me just show you how difficult it is when I drop one of these things, how hard it is to find. So yeah, that's the earring. And obviously you can see the little bauble there. That's in comparison to my nail. That's how tiny these things are. Yeah, these things are tiny. I dropped them countless times over the last, well, over the years, trying to put them in. And is normally I'm in my room, so it's not so bad, so I usually hit the floor. But in here is carpeted, so yeah, not fun. Thank God I found it. Like, I've got, I haven't got, like, kind of got space. I would have just had to put one of the hoops back in until I got home. But yeah, crisis averted. So on that note, I'm going to bed. Night. Morning guys, so excuse the morning voice, I have not long woke up and I'm thirsty, I could do with a drink, so my voice can be a bit croaky. But yeah, it's just gone seven, I've been awake for a bit, Not, I don't actually know what time I woke up, it was sometime between six and a half past. But yeah, the room's pretty good, I can hear the trains out the window, like they're not that bad. But yeah, you definitely can hear them once you're awake. Plans for today is not a lot, like I'm going back home today, so I've got to pack this morning. I did pack a little bit last night, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that I need for this morning. Sorry, my phone just lit up and I didn't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I need this morning, so like my toiletries I need this morning. And I can't really pack until that goes in because it's quite a bulky thing. And I need to pack around it, so I, I've done because my suitcase is a shell suitcase, so it's between two, um, it's got two compartments. And so I've packed the one side, I've just got to pack the other side. I've also got to try and figure out how to get those books I bought yesterday home, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm probably not going to film much after this. I'll probably check in with you guys just I'm about to leave, but that'll be it. I'm not going to try and film my journey home because let's face it it's not happened on the previous trip so it ain't gonna happen on this one and I'm not gonna even attempt it but yeah like I said I'm gonna go get ready and then pack and I'm aiming to leave somehow between nine and a half past just it should give me enough time to get breakfast somewhere and then maybe grab something that I can eat on the bus then for lunch so yeah, I'm gonna go do that and I'll uh, catch up in a bit. Well guys, that's me packed up. I've got a, the odd thing left to go in my backpack, but it's nothing much. It's just like my phone charger and that. Like I said, I'm not gonna film that much today. I might do the odd B-roll here and there if I feel like it, but this is probably gonna be the last clip. Um, I do, however, wanna do like a little debrief on the show, so I realize I haven't actually done that yet. I told you like stage door last night but I didn't actually tell you about the show and I said actually nothing about Oklahoma on Saturday night so I thought I'd just take this little bit at the end of the video just to do a little debrief on the shows. So yeah, Saturday night I went and seen Oklahoma. Uh, I went into it not knowing anything about the show. I don't know anything about Oklahoma like I said. It was one of those things, it was on my post, my scratch off poster so I just wanted to go see it so I could scratch it off. But yeah, it was an interesting evening. I'd booked, so I was up in the Grand Circle, but I'd booked an unusual seat. So in the Grand Circle of that particular thing, I can't remember off the top of my head what the theatre's called, which is really bad, but yeah. They have two side seats. So instead of being like the normal seats in the row, there's just like a little corner bit that's got cushion seat in. And that's where I was. Um, it was kind of nice because I was like on my own, like I could see the rest of the people, they are only like across an aisle from me. But it meant I could move, I didn't have to worry about moving around and disturbing any 
people's view or kicking, like nudging people or anything. And I didn't have to stand up to let people get past, so it was great. And there was like plenty of room, so because it was like a corner piece, best way I can explain it, it's kind of like that. So that bit was wide and then that bit was thinner. It meant I could have my stuff on the seat next to me and stretch my legs out. It was, it was quite a nice seat. It was kind of, the view wasn't perfect, like there was a character on stage or cast member on stage that I couldn't actually see because the first act they're along all around a big long table so like I couldn't see stage right that well just because of where I was sat but yeah it was a really good show uh it was also unusual because of the way the lighting is done in that show so normally in theatre shows they put the house lights down and it's just whatever's on stage in that show they actually keep the lights house lights up the entirety the only time they go off is when lights are going off on stage so the lighting fits with the stage so it's meant to make you feel like you're part of the show even regardless of where you sat they also had like live camera feed as well so there were stages i can't remember what song it was but there was a stage in act one and act two where they kind of did a blackout but they had like night vision camera which they then projected on the back of the stage and then because I was in the grand circle it was put on the ceiling in the grand circle for those to see up there but yeah that was unusual uh, as for the story can't really tell you what it was about I still don't know I've just seen it don't really know where it, but I know vaguely like bits of the storyline here and there but yeah I it's not a show I'd see again and I've seen it once but I wouldn't be rushing back to see it again. Now I've seen it, I've seen it, that's it. So moving on to last night, I saw West End as Hollywood the sequel. Uh, the original performance was May last year which I also saw. Uh, last year was a lot more chaotic because I was seeing Cinderella as a matinee. That finished at half past five over in the Gillian Lynn and I had to get over to Cadden Hall for half six so we got an hour to make what was going to be about 45 50 minute journey in traffic and i remember me and my friend jade we literally got there at like 6 29 so we got straight in and we straight in our seats thankfully the show didn't go up dead on time it was a few minutes late so thank god um but yeah this time the, i had plenty of time i didn't see anything else during the day so plenty of time to get there I will say that is the only downside to that show is that it goes up at half six not at like seven or seven thirty because it means not only can you not do two show days it also makes it hard for some of the acts sorry if there's a little jump just then uh my camera battery died so i had to replace it but yeah like i was saying the only downside to that show is that it goes up at half six so like i explained i had to get from julian lynn last year to the theatre and so did Carol Fletcher <laughs> and I remember like tweeting her at the time <laughs> sorry I hadn't turned my alarm off I remember like tweeting her at the time or speaking to her afterwards and she said yeah she'd only just made it and the same thing happened to Lauren Byrne this year she was in Matilda and that didn't finish till about half five and obviously West End does starts at half six. Now, Rob's pretty good. I think he makes sure anybody who's performing on a Sunday doing their act main jobs, they're in like the second act, so it gives them more like an extra hour to get there and get ready. So that's what happened last year. Carrie was the one who was coming from a show over. She was in the second act and Lauren Byrne was only in the second act this time. So like it's good of Rob to make sure that happens, but you know everyone kind of says the same thing it's weird that it starts at half six because you know by nine o'clock it was all over and everybody was outside <laughs> at stage door uh highlights from the night uh like i said i'm gonna focus mainly on Co joel and carrie but like the other performances were insane as well right from the beginning so like i said you had gsa which is a theater art school so they were making up like a uh, choir in the back. So they opened singing Tick Tick Boom from, oh no that's wrong, that's the show, Tick Tock, song from Tick Tock, Tick Tock Boom. And um, yes, yeah, so they opened, then you had 
the West End Stars started it and then left and then towards the end you had I can't remember I think it's Showbox I think they name it after I haven't got my program is packed but they like a not a theatre school but like a how do I explain it uh, it's a theatre school but it's more for like getting kids into theatre so they were performing uh, towards the end of Act 1 uh, yeah they're all insanely talented voices are insane and it's be interesting in years to come to see them on the actual West End stage because there's no doubt they're going to be uh, the intriguing thing last night uh, was normally there's a lot of when I saw the show last year, I know there were standing ovations for at least two songs. There wasn't this time, which surprised me because a lot of the performances were just mind blowing. So the fact that nobody stood up to give a standing ovation for any of them was just a little weird. Like I just kept turning around and like at every, every song, just waiting to see someone stood up, and it never happened. Like that doesn't say anything about the performance. Like I said, they were all insanely talented, and their voices are just ridiculous. But yeah, it was just unusual for me. Uh, like I said, I'm going to focus more on John Carey because they were the ones I went to see. So they got to do four songs between them. So they each had like a solo song in the first act and a duet, and then they had a duet in the second act. And yeah, they were my highlights. <laughs> like, don't be wrong, other songs were so like they were Disney songs in there, which I loved. and. Uh, my main thing is I didn't know a lot of the songs anyway from the movie like the movies the songs they picked I didn't know a lot of them but so it also helped for the ones that John Carrey did I did know but it was yeah they were good so Joel was up first he did Come Alive from Great Showman and he was living his best life during that song he was dancing around the stage he was like trying to get everyone clap yeah everybody clapping and he was just living his best life and it was so fun to see uh straight after him then carried him on and did how do, how do you know from en enchanted uh i saw it in the program and as soon as i saw it was a disney song i'm like right she's gonna be doing one of these disney songs there were three not actually back to back so there were two before joel come on i think and then obviously there was carries so i knew she was gonna be doing one of them so I was really pleased when she came on to do Enchanted and I couldn't help but notice the back of her hand because she'd written notes on the back of her hand so would Lauren Byrne actually in the second act just to try and uh, prompt her for words she might forget then later in the act they did Falling Slowly from Once I once again saw that in the program I was like oh please say it's Carrie and Joel please say it's Carrie and Joel because I knew they were doing a duet together and it was and it was really sweet and for anybody who didn't know they were a married couple they uh, kissed at the end of the song like in character which doesn't actually happen in the show but there you go and like the presenter came on straight after and did kind of allude to you know they are married <laughs> and the chemistry between the two of them just the looks they were giving each other it would encourage like Carrie didn't stop smiling Joel just looked proud of her the entire time they were just staring at each other it was just really sweet uh second act then towards the end of the second act they did Only Us from Dear Erin Hansen and yeah there was a little bit in the first verse that ga Carrie got a chuckle so the line is be my own me I just have to look it up a sec so yeah the line at the end of the first verse is because what we've got going is good and obviously Carrie just lifted her hand up and was like looking at her engagement ring so I got a little chuckle and he, I think Joel didn't even know she was going to do it so it made him laugh, chuckle as well and yeah it was just nice to see them like the love and happiness raining off them too is just what made it that their performance is so good and even in the encore they weren't really the main singers they were just kind of doing like back in and the more choral stuff but just watching them I was on they were on the opposite side of stage from where I was sat so I was on more towards stage right and they were stage left so the encore obviously everybody was on and just watching them like their faces as they were reacting to the others singing it was fun 
I think that was my favourite part. It wasn't necessarily them performing, it was watching them be theatre fans while on stage. And that was definitely my highlight. But yeah, so I rambled on for way too long. Sorry about that. So like I said, this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you next month for my next trip.